Hello students, welcome to ALS by GM channel. You are watching this ALS speaking interview. Basically, in today's class, we would be taking a look at full interview, how it happens in the ALS exam. And we will be obviously discussing a cue card along with its follow-ups as well. So I'll wait for a couple of seconds till we get the students to join in. And once the students have joined in, we can start the class for today. So as you know, guys, Saturday is Friday. So basically, we would be discussing speaking for a longer period of time because uh, our four o'clock module, each module class is also for speaking today. So what I have come up with that uh, today, instead of just discussing one cue card, we will be discussing some of the introduction questions, then the cue card, and then we would be taking a look at the follow-ups as well. If you are here for the very first time on ALS by GM channel, please do me a favor and subscribe to our channel. Like, share it with your friends as well. The cue card that we would be covering in this interview or in this lecture today would be describe a puzzle like a jigsaw or crossword or a cube or anything that you have played. And uh, obviously, I will be providing you with a nine band answer for this cue card. And this is actually one of the latest cue cards. If you're planning to give your exam between the months of May to August 2021, then uh, there are chances that you might actually encounter this cue card in your ALS exam. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, there will be intro and follow up questions included in this video. So this is a must watch video for all of you. If you're having struggles with uh, speaking or you want to improve your ALS speaking. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. What are introduction questions, right? Basically, the part one of your ALS speaking exam is introduction questions. And uh, these questions are basically, uh, there are like about eight to 10 different questions in this part. It lasts about three to five minutes. Your whole speaking exam is only 15 minutes, 11 to 15 minutes. So each section is divided into five minutes approximately. And then each section is divided into three bands for the band scoring purposes. So in the first section, which is the introduction section, there are usually eight to 10 different questions. All the questions are related to your personal choices or behaviors. Basically, they would be asking you questions about your preferences, about your behavior, about your attitude, about your likes, about your dislikes, and about certain things. So that's basically what they're asking about, or that's basically what they ask for in the introduction part. Your job is to be honest and to provide fluent answers in this part, typically. The answers uh, typically should be two to four sentences long, should have some basic reasoning. You cannot answer in just one word that no or yes. You have to give reasons, you have to give justifications, you have to be able to provide at least two to four sentences long answer in order to score well in the ALS speaking exam. So if anybody has any doubts related to the introduction questions, you can comment below guys. You can definitely ask me if you have any doubts and we can clear that out as well. So let's take a look at some of the common introduction questions and practice. That would be our part one of our speaking interview that we will be discussing in today's class. So. What you can do is uh, you can type your comments, you can type your ideas in the comment section, or you can just hear me out, you can just hear my ideas, and then you can later on when you practice, you can answer or you can make your answers according to my ideas or using them basically. Okay, so let's get started with the introductory questions. The first one would be the very basic one. What is your name, right? That's the most common one that has to be there. They will ask you about your name. So basically for that, you could answer the way that uh, my name is Gurvinda Singh Man. You could obviously use your name. You're not gonna use my name there in the exam. So you could definitely use their, your name for this, 
first introduction question you can tell them what they can call you if they haven't asked there you can say you can call me by my first name gurvinder so that's something that i could easily say just to make it a two sentence answer but that's not uh, absolutely necessary because it's just your name so even if you answer with just what's my name or like what's your name that's obviously fine too that my name is abc then now we would get to some actual introduction questions and then uh, we would uh, talk about uh, the introduction question so the next question that we have is what are your hobbies so to answer that, that that's also one of the very common questions because uh, a lot of people a lot of examiners tend to ask people about their hobbies so i would give you my answer again your answer should depend on your answer should be based on your own choices and preferences and what you like to do in your free time well i like to do different things in my free time i usually play cricket with my friends or badminton sometimes when i have some leisure time i also like to recite poetry since i am a poet so that's my answer again if you like to play outside you could say that if you like to listening to music you could include that if you like to watch movies you could say that if you like to you know play board games or anything that you basically enjoy make sure that uh, you don't say something too irrelevant make sure when you're talking about your hobbies make sure to stay basically talk about some easy things because uh, i have seen some people i have seen some students saying that they like to read books in their free time and when the examiner ask, starts asking more questions about reading books like what was the last book you read uh, why did you read it who wrote it what was the story and stuff and then they get confused because they have actually never read a book they're just saying that they like to read book to sound impressive to they're just trying to you know create an impression that we are good students and we like to read books and stuff so i would actually suggest you to avoid saying reading books because then uh, if you don't read book uh, if you're not a actual like a regular reader you would actually have problems in answering the next questions uh, good evening rajini good evening good to see you in the class just uh, to let you know guys for those who have just joined us we are actually discussing the whole interview today for the whole speaking interview right now i'm looking at some of the introduction questions then we will cover up a cue card and then we will do the follow ups as we do usually so i've covered two questions so far the next question that is also very common for uh, for the introduction part is do you like shopping so i think everybody does like shopping right so that's also one of the common questions but you have to be very specific and very careful while answering this question because there will be a lot of questions related to it that would be followed up by this good evening manpreet good evening so my answer for this uh, do you like shopping would be very simple yes absolutely i love shopping i usually go on shopping for twice a month to shop for necessary items sometimes i like to shop online as well but uh, most of the times i prefer visiting the stores personally so i have basically given the idea that i like online shopping i have included all the things right because those are the questions that's going to follow up related to the speaking or basically related to the shopping because if you don't include these things there might be the list for questions might be longer but i try to cover it up and i just uh, basically answer everything one thing that i didn't mention and that's going to be our next question do you go for shopping with uh, friends or family members this is again very easy very simple question but students get confused all the time cuz uh, they get confused actually so they actually get mess up the answer and lose their score so you have to be very specific right we all know that we all go shopping with friends and family members right so let's answer it that way that first couple of lines you could say about your friends or wh what do you what do you do or uh, what do you like to shop when you go with friends and then we could talk about family what do you like to go friends or family members for shopping with so for the friends part i would start with the family members first because i tend to go with family members more than the friends well i actually go with both family members and my friends for shopping if i'm shopping for a party 
or an occasion like that, then I prefer to go with my friends. If there is a function in the family and I have to shop for that, then I choose to go with my family members because they have a, they have a better taste of our traditional cultural clothes and apparels. So that would be my basic answer. Basically, if you're going on a party or on like, you know, friends birthday thing, then definitely you should go with your friends because they will be providing you better opinions what to shop for. But if you're going to a family function, family event, I think then your preference should be family because they know the better, they know the taste better of uh, what clothes, what to wear in these uh, occasions and uh, what to do. So that's why you should uh, definitely go with your family members for the functions thing. I hope these uh, questions are, uh, I hope these answers are clear to everybody. If you have any doubts, guys, feel free to comment, okay? If you're having any doubts, feel free to comment. I would be more than happy to answer them. So the next question would be, do you prefer online shopping? Online shopping is a trend these days, right? So if you're being asked questions related to shopping, the chances of you getting questioned for uh, online shopping are very high. They will definitely ask you questions related to online shopping. So I personally, I actually do a lot of shopping online. So I have my answer prepared for it. But if you don't do that much, you could go negative as well that you don't prefer. Well, I actually do prefer online shopping a lot these days. Due to the COVID-19 restrictions, all the shopping malls and uh, shops are closed in my area. So online shopping is the only way through which I can uh, access my shopping or through which I can meet my shopping requirements. If I'm specifically buying for electronics or uh, materials related to like clothes, shoes and other things, I prefer to buy them online. But if I'm buying groceries or daily consuming items like uh, fruits, vegetables, snacks, those things I like to buy from shops because I, I get to check the expiry date and manufacturing date on them. So yes, I do prefer online shopping. So that was my answer. Again, your answer doesn't have to be exactly similar. Your answer can differ from my answer, but you can take ideas basically guys, how we are making it, how I'm not taking a lot of time to like basically think or plan and but you could see you could notice that my answers are going in a like a well organized way so that's my whole point to teach uh which one do you want to say no gojewal are you talking about uh, do you like shopping or do you prefer online shopping which one are you asking for no answer negative I would, I would assume that you're asking for the, do you like shopping one? So I would give the negative for that one first. So no, actually I do not like to go for shopping. My parents usually shop things for me. I feel that it's just waste of time and I'm very bad at deciding which things to buy. So I do not like to go for shopping. And I was right, Gujival. So I just uh, answered the shopping one in negative. So bang on. Next question is how often do you go for shopping? Although we already mentioned when we were, I was uh, discussing the very first question, do you like shopping? I already mentioned that, but I will, now we have to describe it in like two to three sentences. Like do, how often do we go for shopping? So, well, I'm a shopaholic person. So I usually go twice a week. Uh, also when there is a family function or a birthday party that I need to go, then I go for a long shopping or then I shop for different things like clothes, shoes, jewelry, and et cetera. But uh, usually on daily basis, I just shop for basic needs, basic amenities like fruits, vegetables, and snacks. So that's basically my answer. Again, if you don't go for shopping, you would be like, as I just mentioned, I do not like to go for shopping that often. So basically, if there is a family function or if there is something important that I have to go, then only I choose to go shopping. Otherwise, my parents buy everything that I need. So that would be a negative answer for this if you don't go to the shopping malls that often. Has your shopping habits been affected in the past year? This was actually an interesting question that I felt that it's very important to include this because we all know that uh, since last year, everybody's uh, shopping habits have been disturbed, right? Due to the COVID-19 
corona virus pandemic and the lockdown and everything happening so i believe that everybody's habits have been affected so that's why i included yes definitely my shopping habits have been affected uh, in the past year due to the covid-19 coronavirus pandemic the indian government has imposed a lockdown and the, all the shopping malls and shops and outlets are closed so i have been only shopping online for luxurious things like clothes and shoes and stuff but uh, if i talk about uh, just buying the regular amenities like fruits and vegetables those things we can still access because those come under the essential needs so those shops are open but other than that everything is closed so my shopping habits have definitely changed and i have been preferring more to online shopping as compared to the in person shopping so that's i know i elongated a little bit more i wanted to give you more ideas i wanted to provide you with more options so that's why i went that way and uh, that's why i said it this way but you can again mold your answer according to your own options and according to your own ideas i think that should be our last introduction question now so if you are thinking of if you have any other introduction question in mind you want me to discuss you can comment below otherwise i'll start with the last one what things do you usually go shopping for again i think i have already talked a lot about it so i would keep it very simple what things would you like would you go for shopping right basically clothes uh, shoes and uh, what else you are a student so you might go for shopping for stationary products and uh, sometimes if your father is not at home you might go for uh, fruits and vegetables right so we could answer it according to that we could answer it uh, uh, just molding it that way well as i mentioned i like to go for shopping for uh, clothes shoes and uh, other things since i'm a student sometimes i go for shopping to shop for uh, stationary products but if my father is not home sometimes i do have to buy the essential items as well for, such as vegetables fruits and uh, milk etc so that's uh, that's one way that uh, we could uh, answer this question so that's uh, the introduction questions in this interview for today if anybody has any more like uh, introduction questions or any doubts you can ask me before i move on to our cue card topic for this interview so i'm giving you about 10 seconds to type or ask any questions if you have and otherwise i would move on to the cue card topic so far i do not see any questions so i think everything is clear to everybody sounds strange I, i don't think so i'm such a good teacher that everything is clear in the first go but if it is then i feel great i'm honored that uh, whatever i teach you it's clear in one go so that's very nice of you guys now let's uh, move on to part 2 which is our cue card topic and uh, it's one of the latest cue cards that we have in part 2 basically you would be given a topic if you don't know what topic to or part 2 is of speaking basically you would be given a topic and you will have to speak on that particular topic for about 2 minutes usually i like to say one minute and 50 seconds is good enough time so anything between one and a half minutes to two minutes is good enough and uh, basically you will be given one minute to think about it and plan your answer so make sure to use that time wisely how you can use that time wisely by practicing a lot when you are practicing speaking at home make sure to practice uh, making ideas planning out your ideas use a piece of paper time yourself set a watch Uh, set a timer on your watch and then start writing ideas then start speaking because you will get into the habit you know how our brain has to get into a habit of doing certain things and then it can learn so it's very important for you to actually practice it every day practice it in your daily life so that you could actually get used to it get the hang of it and finally utilize it in your speaking exam and score higher you will be given a piece of paper so you can write down some keywords to organize your idea that's very important i remember when i was teaching at the institute a lot of students would come to me for speaking without a pen or pencil in their hand and they never wrote anything and then obviously their answers were not the best their answers were not organized at all 
So it is very important. It's very urgent that you should have a piece of paper and a pen whenever you're practicing at home and write down your ideas, write down your thoughts, write down your keywords, how you're going to plan it, how you're going to say it. So let's take a look at uh, which cue card we're going to talk about today. Let's take a look at one of the sample cue cards and uh, we will plan our sample answer. We will plan our ideas. We will plan it out and answer it all together. At any point, guys, I'm making it clear once again. At any point, if you have any questions, feel free to use that comment section. It's only made for you. I, it's no use of for me, right? So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. I would be more than happy to answer those questions for you. Okay, so let's get started with the cue card. So the cue card that we have today is describe a puzzle, jigsaw, crossword, etc. you have played. In this, you should say what it is. So we have to say what puzzle, what jigsaw, crossword, sudoku, whatever it is. How difficult or easy it is. So we have to basically tell how difficult it is to play with or how easy it is. How long it takes you to solve it? How long do you take it to solve this puzzle, solve this, uh, I don't know, zigzag, crossword, or whatever you're playing? And how you feel about it, as usually the last question is in all the sub questions, how you feel about it, right? So basically, I don't know, uh, let me know in the comments, guys, how many of you have actually tried different puzzles? How many of you have uh, tried the crosswords, zigzags, or uh, sudoku in the newspapers and stuff, you know? Have you ever tried any of those? Let me know in the comment section, guys, so we can actually start. So basically, I have tried them a lot. I think those uh, brain teasers are very good. Those brain teasers are very necessary to, for our brain to refresh it and uh, to keep it working in working condition, basically. Those uh, brain testing systems or tests are good and fun to play, actually. So. I keep on trying different ones at different phases of my life and different times. So I will start with uh, that Dara has tried, yes, Rajni has tried, that's good, that's good. Okay, so basically we'll start planning our answer, we'll start planning our uh, basically sample answer or how would we use our ideas. So first would be general line, right? How many Q basically types of puzzles are popular in India? or how many different types of puzzles you have played or solved, how keen you are to do that. Then basically it will be your opening statement, which would be again similar, right? How often do you play or how much you enjoy solving them or playing them? Then comes our pet statement where we would like to talk about, uh, we would just say, use the phrase that uh, here, I would like to talk about a puzzle, a jigsaw or whatever that I have used, it's commonly known as whatever you want to say. Uh, Manpreet, okay, you have tried the crosswords, that's good. Okay, I don't know if you have heard, but uh, I, I think all of you must have heard about it. Um, I, I, won't, I will show you the name of it. Have you heard about Rubik's Cube? Comment guys, let me know. Have you heard about or have you ever played with a Rubik's Cube? It's actually a puzzle. I know you might... Uh, feel that it's very weird. Have you heard about the Rubik's Cube? I did not include a picture in this slide. I should have. Now I feel like, but let's see if you have heard about it. Have you heard about Rubik's Cube, guys? Let me know in the comments quickly. Then, I, then only I would move ahead. Okay, Gurjewal has never heard, okay. Rajni has not heard either. Okay, interesting. Now I'm feeling that I should have. Dara has not heard either. Oh, okay. I should, I should have. I must have included the a picture of a jigsaw. Oh, sorry, the Rubik cube in this slide. But that's okay. Uh, let's test my explaining skills. I might be able to actually explain to you guys uh, what those are. I guess uh, Matrit has seen one she hasn't commented so okay you know how there's a there's this little cube with different colors and you have to organize it so that uh, there's one color on each side just like make it similar so there's a cube with i think uh, nine small cubes on each side and it has like different sides 
and you rotate and you can rotate all the cubes like individual cubes and then you have to make it or organize it that way that uh, one side has all red cubes one side is facing white green yellow blue it's it's very fun exercise guys now something similar okay you got it so i had uh, i had a good uh, explaining skills i guess that's why rajni now knows which rubik cube i'm talking about others i suppose you got it okay dara got it too gurjevo did you get it raman preet did you do you get it that's the rubik cube okay i'm assuming that everybody should have got it now if not then uh, you could google it later that's fine there's so many rubik cubes there so i'm going to talk about that i find it very tough honestly saying guys honestly speaking i find it very tough till date i have never been able to solve it i have played with it for like such a long time i have played it for so long but i could never solve it that's why i think uh, i think the first time i tried it was in grade 7 when one of my friends brought it to the school and i tried it but again as i mentioned i could never get it the questions there was a sub question that how long does it take you to solve it or right so long time actually for i wanted to say forever here but i thought that uh, it might not be appropriate so i didn't use the word forever here uh, but it takes me a long time basically forever to solve it which i have never been possible i have watched videos too obviously because there is not a lot of the sub questions related so i added some words i added some ideas that uh, i have watched videos of how to solve it and tried it a lot right obviously gave it a lot of shots and i do feel embarrassed for not being not being able to solve it and uh, i'm very curious how do people do that man if i don't know i know there are algorithms and stuff there are different ways of uh, solving those but uh, i don't know i just can't get the hang of it i guess it's not just my cup of tea that's why i can't to do it but yeah i do enjoy it i do uh, have a lot of fun playing with it i do have a lot of uh, good bad memories related to it but yeah i can't solve it so those are basically my keywords my ideas that what i think of uh, the rubik cube and uh, obviously not all of you would have tried it not all of you would be familiar with all different puzzles and stuff so it's okay it's okay you can choose your own you could go with sudoku you could go with uh, you know jigsaw you could go with anything else that you have tried you could go with some uh, crosswords you could go with some brain teasers you could go with uh, some those uh, puzzle things are what do you call that uh, lego puzzles lego puzzles are pretty popular these days you could go with any of those if you have played rubik's cube and you find it difficult to then it's easy because i have just made up a sample answer for you and you could easily just use or copy it and learn from it and use or utilize it according to you according to your own ideas so now i will read out my answer that i have come up with when you are practicing i do recommend you to stand in front of a mirror stand in front of a mirror and there have a piece of paper with your ideas on it and read it aloud so that you can hear yourself you can hear your mistakes you can also record it to make sure that your timing is perfect and so that you can actually check the pronunciation and check for grammar mistakes later so without wasting any more time i'll read my answer it should be about 2 uh, minutes but let's see how long it is well there are a lot of puzzles popular in india such as crosswords sudoku etc i personally find these jigsaws very interesting and mind freshening here i would like to talk about one such puzzle that i played with for a long time it's commonly known as the rubik's cube basically it has several small cubes of different colors and one has to arrange them accordingly i vividly remember when i was in grade 7 one of my classmates brought a cube in our school i used to see it in the kids shows in my childhood and was always fascinated with the way they solved it in quick span of time when i got an opportunity to try it i thought it would be really easy to solve it but that wasn't the case even after trying it several times i wasn't able to solve it 
I was really frustrated with myself and gave it a few more attempts in the next couple of days. Eventually, I decided to give it up as it wasn't my cup of tea. A couple of years back, I again started playing with it. This time, I even used technology to support me as I watched a plethora of videos but still couldn't benefit from it. I believe it's something I can never overcome. All my friends can solve different cubes of different sizes and shapes at their ease, but it's just too much for me. Sometimes I even feel embarrassed for not being able to solve it. Although I'm reasonably good with other puzzles such as Sudoku and crosswords, but this is a tough nut to crack. However, I won't completely give it up yet. I will keep digging and I will, I believe one day I'll achieve success in it. So Rubik's Cube is the one puzzle that I have played a lot with. So that's my sample answer basically. Uh, you see that uh, basically, I, as I mentioned, I'm not lying at all, guys. This is like, this is an honest answer that I come up with because uh, I have tried it a lot. I remember back when I was in Canada, I used to take one to my work and play with it for a long time. My coworkers would just solve it, would just uh, basically fix it in like 10 seconds, 11 seconds, 20 seconds. But I would find it really hard to solve and I would waste a lot of time doing it. So that's why I chose this particular one. If you have, you could go with the easy ones too and you could actually be like, oh, I find it really easy. I always do, if you're going with the Sudoku, there is a Sudoku in the newspaper every day. I like to solve it. I'm very good at it. I even send the answers to the newspaper editor and they also posted once or while you could give that example that they have posted your answer in the exam uh, in the newspaper so i feel very glad that i have that uh, skill of uh, you know solving out sudokus or puzzles like that so you could go with easy ones too you could definitely go with that let me know if you have any questions guys uh, you can see some of the words that uh, i have used which make it a good answer interesting mind freshening one must arrange them accordingly always fascinated with, really frustrated with, wasn't my cup of tea, watched a plethora of videos, but still couldn't get the hang of it. I wanted to use the hang of it, but I thought it was a little informal, so I used benefit from it. Uh, solve different cubes of different sizes and shapes at their ease. Ease basically means at easily. Uh, yet, and I will keep digging. Keep digging means basically keep trying, keep looking for it, right? And uh, trust me, I'm still looking to, you know, solve it. I think one day I will be able to. If I go, I, ha I have even tried that way going, you know, one step at a time. I have tried that too, but uh, it, does, it just doesn't work with me. I don't have that either audition with my hands and my mind. I don't know what's missing there, but uh, the, something is missing for sure that I can't figure out. Okay, so next, after this uh, speaking, basically cue card session, now you should be like seven to eight minutes or nine minutes into your speaking interview and you should encounter the last part, which is follow-ups. If your cue card wasn't long enough, you might see that your examiner might ask you more questions. Basically, when was the last time you played or something like that? But uh, that would be just very short ones. And the examiner would make it clear that now it's part three. Now we are moving to part three. So in this session, there will be approximately seven to nine questions related to the QCA topic. Anything between seven to nine questions, usually basically uh, four to five minutes would be spent on these questions. Sometimes if uh, your introduction questions were less, if the, if the instructor, if the examiner asks you less introductory questions, then they may ask you more of these uh, follow-up questions just to make it look fun. <laughs> so that's why basically, that's why basically the follow-ups are usually given more importance and uh, they're considered as the hard ones as well. So moving on to the uh, cue card uh, follow-ups, basically you have to answer these questions uh, on, in about four to five sentences. 
and uh, these questions are basically requesting your opinion about different facts about different general things it won't be really there is no correct or wrong answer basically you are given you ask about uh, your opinion your choices your preference about some general facts about some general things so let's get started and discuss some of the follow ups that are related with this specific q cut and i will provide you with my answers for this one as well why do parents let their children play puzzles hmm i think that's such a good one and uh, i'm very sure that uh, this will be definitely there if you get if you're encountered with this q cut specifically this follow up would definitely be there so why do you think so they help to develop the problem solving skills right problem solving skills would develop if children are playing it's a fun activity it's a fun brain teaser brain teaser is one word that you could use what else why at the same time they're learning and at the same time they're playing so it's learning while playing right so you could use that phrase that learning while playing and i think that's very good enough that's good enough answer that like you know so let's try well according to me i think parents let their children play puzzles because they find that uh, it's a fun way to learn while playing children when they solve these puzzles they get acquainted with some good problem solving skills which benefit them later in their adult life also when they're solving different puzzles as crossword specifically they get acquainted they get to know a lot about the world their general knowledge improves so that's mainly why parents let their children play puzzles because more than playing it's learning so that's my answer that my approach to it again as i mentioned you don't have to be limited to my options you do not have to be limited to my choices answers you could answer it according to your own thoughts and opinions what kind of puzzles improve people's intelligence hmm okay i want to know some of your opinions on this one tell me in the comment section guys what kind of puzzles do you think uh, improve people's intelligence i personally i think uh, definitely sudoku is one of the crosswords definitely one of them jigsaw is not uh, certainly not what other do you think Rubik's cube? No, I don't think so. That would definitely, yeah. So, I would go with Sudoku and crosswords, definitely. But uh, obviously, because we do not have a lot of ideas on that, so we are not going to start with that. So we're going to start with something. Hmm, that's an interesting question. Well, I personally believe that uh, all the puzzles improve people's intelligence. Some in a different way, while others in the other way. I personally believe uh, we already used, so we're not going to use it again. Sorry. So. I think uh, that uh, Sudoku and crosswords play vital role in improving people's smartness, and uh, they also enhance their general knowledge. So those ones definitely help in enhancing person's intelligence. So that was my answer because that's what I think. As I as I just mentioned to you guys, that's what I think. Because all the puzzles do improve people's intelligence, but. Uh, Sudoku and crosswords, specifically general knowledge based crosswords, they definitely improve their problem solving skills, right? Um, what are detective story? Why are sorry? Why are detective stories attractive to people? Who likes to watch uh, detective stories, guys? If if anybody is from India, who used to watch? Who like to watch CID on uh, Sony Entertainment? or maybe what else detective stories i do know of uh, i can't be really sure about any other i mean i don't know if we should call it a detective story but south india and crime patrol those ones were pretty detective based right so who likes to watch those who like who enjoys watching them okay dara give me one reason why you like to watch it why you get attracted to those this that's what basically we can answer well i also used to watch crime patrol and stuff too so let me think what was the one thing that attracted me the most mm. i guess action based 
I like the suspense, I think. The suspenseful. So that would be one of their nature, the engineer, that they are suspense, thriller and suspenseful. So that could be one point. Okay, so let me see what I come up with for an answer for that. And uh, again, I'm not uh, always perfect. I do make mistakes too, but you try to make up your own answers, guys. So, well, according to me, I think uh, detective stories attract a lot of people because of their suspenseful nature. People like to watch action and thriller genre serials and stories and uh, movies. So when they find the detective stories suspenseful, they tend to get attracted towards them. And they like to use their own perception as well to solve it. So they could resume at the beginning of any story what, who the culprit is. And then they tend to watch it and to read it to actually figure out if they were correct or wrong. So that's why people get attracted, and that's why these detective stories are attractive to people. So that's my reasoning for it. Again, your reasoning doesn't have to be similar, but I think these, this reasoning that I have provided is very genuine and very basic. So I think it's okay. It would be nice if you give this as uh, the generic reasoning, right? So let's take a look at some more follow-ups. If you have any questions, guys, if you have any stuff, follow-ups related you think you might encounter you can comment those as well and uh, we would answer those as well what do you think is better a detective movie or its original novel hmm this is interesting right what would you prefer would you like to watch a detective movie or would you actually like to read a novel which is actually the original part of it because definitely the movie would have things exaggerated a bit and uh, there would be so much more fiction to it. But the uh, original novel would be completely original. So what would you prefer? I would like to know from you guys. Tell me in the comments, novel or movie, just like that. I think uh, for me personally, in my case, I think I'd go with... Hi, Swati. It's going to be... I think uh, I would personally go with the movie because I'm not a good reader. I do not like to read a lot at all. I don't spend some time reading. So I would personally choose the movie. And But uh, again, you could choose novel if you like reading. And we, I would provide you answer for both. Well, since I'm not a good reader, so I believe that uh, a detective movie is uh, much better than the original novel because uh, of the two factors. One being the main factor that uh, you can sit back and watch it and you can see the actual things happening on screen and you can get engaged in it. But on the other side, if you're reading the novel, you basically have to imagine things and uh, you have to go in that imagination and imagine the things that would be happening, which makes it harder for you. But uh, And also, you can pause the movie, you can just rewind 10 seconds, 20 seconds and get in touch again. But in the case of novel, you would have to read it continuously to actually enjoy it completely. So that's the answer for uh, basically if you think movie is better than novel. If the novel is better, well, since I'm a good reader and I like to read uh, detective stories and novels, I find that uh, reading the original novel is better than watching a movie. I believe that most of the movies are exaggerated a lot and uh, then they make it fictional so that they lose interest and uh, reading a novel has its own perks. So basically you would, uh, that's, that's one way you could go if you're answering the novel one. And uh, Swati is saying something so let me, uh, yes Swati, uh, definitely there is a video coming on letter writing at four o'clock. I have got a special teacher for you. There's a journal writing teacher that will be conducting the class. Stay connected with us by GM. You will definitely see a video today. So there will be a live class or there will be a recorded video. I'm still working out with the teacher. And uh, once uh, she's sure how she wants to conduct it, there will be a video today for the ALS journal letter writing. So you're welcome for thanking me. So this was our question, uh, whatever you think is better, uh, movie or the original novel. What kind of puzzles are popular in India, guys? Now, 
these are some questions related to your country and your nation right so what in my nation different kinds of uh, puzzles are popular i do know that uh, all the newspapers have sudoku and crosswords in their magazines so those are definitely the most popular ones i do know that uh, rubik cubes are also very common these days so that's one answer you could also include uh, the lego basically lego puzzles i don't know exactly what they are called but yeah lego puzzles is something that's very common among the children these days are there a lot of movies based on detective stories in your country well certainly there are so many movies based on detective stories in my country not only movies there are actually so many web series and uh, tv shows based on the detective stories and the suspenseful nature people tend to watch them a lot because they find themselves engaged in it and they could actually use their own perspective and their own thinking to see to find the culprit and that's why these are very popular so that's my way to of answering it i think it's very popular right how many if if you are watching the web series and stuff i think all those are detectives these days right the what was it the sensual thrillers and like on mx player hotstar and uh, amazon prime netflix all of those all of those are basically action and thriller and suspenseful detective story right? that they encounter with that we encounter with so i think that would be my last follow up question for this cue card if you have any in your mind definitely go ahead and ask me now do you think detective stories have negative or positive effects this one is also an interesting question right do you think it has negative or positive effects definitely has to have something so just if you watch crime patrol and all those kinds of just think of the positive and negative effects of it well in my perspective i think uh, detective stories or movies have both negatives and positives talking about the positives i think uh, it enhances person's intelligence and their ability to solve a problem solve a crime and then on the negative side if we take a look it also shows and teaches people various ways to commit a crime and how they could get away with it without getting caught so i think that's the main advantage otherwise it teaches people a lot of good things a lot of good ways so that is our follow up for this the positives and negative definitely right you must have seen this study and you must have seen uh, different uh, ways how the criminals used to commit crime how they used to teach different ways right so i think that's very informative like who ha- who could come up with something like ice knife to kill somebody who would who would think that and uh, using an ice knife to kill somebody but they actually use that in the series so and that's where i learned it from that it's a pretty cool way because uh, the ice knife would melt by the time the police reaches and they would be looking for the murder weapon which would be a knife and since the ice has melted nobody would be able to detect nobody would be able to locate the murder weapon hence nobody could be found as a criminal nobody could be charged because according to i think the law you need the murder weapon in order to prove the murder, that somebody has committed a crime so sorry that was a little off topic but i think that still helps you to improve your english so that was our today that was our full interview so basically we did the introduction then we did the full cue card and then we did the whole uh, basic uh, follow ups if you joined us late you can go rewind and you watch the video again uh, but there are some basic tips that i always give you that uh, would definitely help you to improve your speaking you have to be confident guys make sure remember i'm saying this over and over but i don't think so you guys are remembering that confidence is the key to higher band score the more confident you are about your speaking the more confident you are about your answers the better your score will be trust me this is only thing this is a barrier you need to overcome to achieve 7 plus bands in speaking one the day you become confident about your speaking the day you will start getting better score plan your ideas by making a chat you just saw you every day you see in the speaking class how i use the 
basically the flow chart in effect it will actually organize my answer and come up with a good answer so you can definitely do that as well you could definitely try it and you could definitely work it out i'm 100% sure that this thing will definitely help you out as well if it does to me keep it simple guys you always see that how i usually keep it very simple very easy basic right so keep it simple and easy to understand don't you run for don't use too many exclusive vocab words don't uh, use anything like that just keep it very simple and easy first everybody can understand practice mirror speaking every day four to five times yes swati that's definitely true but uh, that that's a good answer too yeah you could go you could go for that uh, follow up question or even yeah for the flow chart process if that's what you're thinking about. so definitely everybody has their own techniques i'm just here to provide guidance i'm just here to trying to help then you could try it if you think it's helpful you could go with it otherwise you could ask me i could give you some more tips some different tips and uh, any suggestion on breaking monotone speech if you, are you giving the speech or uh, is somebody else giving the speech and you want to break it that's that's the thing that you should mean if you are talking monotonously maybe you could uh, you know if it's uh, i think in the cue card only you would be there would be monotone speech from your side for 2 minutes otherwise that would be just like conversation so in daily life basically if you want to involve somebody else while you're giving the speech or while you're having a conversation and you just somebody keeps talking you could ask them a question asking them a question you could uh, show them that you are interested in that whatever they are talking about whatever they are saying about you could just uh, use those words and ask them something relevant to break their monotonous speech and uh, same strategy if you are giving the speech and you want to take a break and ask something ask them something ask the audience something ask your friend whoever you are conversating with ask them whoever is a uh, part of your conversation ask them something related to your conversation so that uh, they could uh, get engaged or you could get more engaged in it so practice cue card guys practice cue cards mirror speaking every day five to six each cue card just takes five minutes hardly use words those have easy pronunciation and that's a plus plus if you use those words those have easy pronunciation avoid repetition of words sometimes those that is unavoidable but try your best to avoid it as much as you can because that you would be easily getting seven plus man in while speaking and even you in real life you would sound better when you're speaking so maintain the flow and fluency make sure to have a flow and fluency while you are answering while you are speaking because then everybody would like to hear to you everybody would like to listen to you if you're speaking the flow if you're just using words and stuff then you would definitely find problems make proper eye contact with the examiner make uh, proper eye contact with the examiner make sure to look into the eyes if you're giving exam soon you would be probably having your speaking delivered through online platforms so it becomes more important to look in the eye look towards the camera basically there would be the eye right so that uh, the examiner can give you like half a answer just for looking at it if you think that uh, today's full interview was helpful to you if you think that uh, you have learned something new today or even if you think that uh, it was helpful and just in general basis press that like button now guys it gives me motivation the more you share our channel with the more our community grows and the better it keeps going on right the more encouraged i will be the better videos i will be making for you better content i will be uh, coming up for you and then it's a win win situation for everybody the more channel get the more likes and shares that channel gets the more reach it would get and hence and we would actually in large our community we would actually definitely grow our community you all would uh, give exam and uh, clear out and then i would be left with no student so make sure to share it with at least five friends of yours and ask them to share five each that way we could build our community subscribe to our channel if you haven't follow us on facebook instagram like share comment whatsapp me if you have any problems 
And if you need any help regarding any specific U card, you can leave your questions in the comment sections as well. You're very welcome, Swati. I'm I'm uh, actually glad that I was able to help. Thank you so much for coming in the class today. If you have any more questions, again, feel free to comment. Feel free to WhatsApp me on the number provided. Stay tuned with IELTS by GM. Those uh, who are specifically in practicing or preparing for IELTS general training, stay tuned. Very soon, I will be back with a co-teacher who would be providing you with some tips and uh, would be discussing the IELTS journal writing letter or letter writing, and uh, you could discuss that with her. So stay tuned. Hope you are all safe in this uh, tough time. Hope you're staying, uh, you're staying safe, you're staying home. Make sure to wear proper mask while going out, double mask up, and uh, follow all the protocols issued by your governments. Make sure to get vaccinated if you have time, if you have resources, make sure to get vaccinated. Take full care, take care of yourself, take care of your family members. At the same time, utilize this free time to learn English, learn something new, improve your personality. Our classes that we do daily are not just for English speaking or ALS. It's actually personality development as well. The better you speak, the better you would know, and the better your personality would look. Right? Tomorrow is Saturday. There is a special fun exercise class. So do not miss that out, guys. Please do not miss that out. Whatever you're doing, it's usually weekend lockdown everywhere. So you must be sitting free at home. Take some time. Engage in that activity. Okay, tomorrow would be really fun activity. So, okay, let me end this class now and I will restart the class once I have the matter ready and I can get in touch with the teacher. So thank you so much. Stay tuned with Bals by GM. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good rest of your day and enjoy over the weekend.